Hey everyone, welcome to my channel English Literature Made Easy with Saswati. Today I will be talking about John Keats' idea of negative capability. First I will talk about some of the facts related to the term and then I will be explaining the concept of negative capability. So do stay tuned and watch the video till the end so that you don't miss out anything. So let's first begin with the major facts related to the term negative capability. So the first fact is John Keats for the first time introduced the term negative capability in a letter addressed to his brothers George and Thomas Keats on December 22, 1817. According to John Keats, William Shakespeare abundantly possessed negative capability. There was a question in UGC NET 2012 where they asked who according to Keats possessed negative capability enormously and the answer is William Shakespeare. Number 3, Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth who belonged to the first generation of romantic poets lacked negative capability according to Keats. There was another poet named Charles Wentworth Dilke who also lacked negative capability. Now let's move on to the concept of negative capability. Negative capability is the capability to be in uncertainties, mysteries and doubts without any irritable reaching after fact and reason. It means that the poet needs to embrace and accept all the mysteries and uncertainties of the world and not look for facts and reason all the time. According to Keats, a poet is a receiver and not a seeker of facts like a philosopher. A poet says job is to look for mysteries and uncertainties and doubts and the beauty inherent in all things in the universe and not look for solving all the mysteries and doubts that is part of the universe. For Keats, if a poet searches for facts and reason all the time, goes further away from artistic or aesthetic beauty that is inherent in all things in the universe. For kids, artistic beauty is of utmost importance as he says in Ode on a Grecian Urn. Beauty is truth, truth beauty. For philosophers, truth and reality is the ultimate aim that they seek out at all times. According to classical Greek philosopher Plato and his theory of mimesis, philosophers look for reality whereas poets and artists look for illusion. That is the reason Plato asked for the banishment of the poets in his treatise Republic. As he said, poets are twice removed from reality. Explaining his theory of mimesis, Plato gave the example of the chair in which the idea of the chair is the reality, the carpenter's chair is the copy of that reality and the artist or poet or painter's chair is the copy of that copy. Samuel Taylor Coleridge was inspired by the German idealism of Immanuel Kant, Friedrich Schelling, Leibniz and Hegel who seek out for an absolute idea as the ultimate truth. But Keats saw this search for truth or knowledge as a handicap for a poet because poet's job is to provide aesthetic beauty by being receptive to the universe in all its doubts and mysteries. In Shakespeare's play Hamlet, for example, the appearance of the ghost of King Hamlet, or in Macbeth, the appearance of the three witches, or else the magical world of the Tempest, or the Midsummer Night's dream, are not part of reality. But Shakespeare does not busy himself in finding out the mysteries or uncertainties because he is not a philosopher but an artist and that is the reason Keats finds in Shakespeare an abundance of negative capability. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video and if you like the video then do like it, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. See ya.